Good afternoon everyone. In today's video, we're going to be building a Market Pulse dashboard very similar to the one that you see right here on my charts. Let me start by showing you why this is useful in the first place. So if I expand this and we open this out, you'll notice the scan that I'm using to populate this watch list of stocks is our bullish squeeze signal scan. That's to say all of these stocks we have bullish bias on. Now on uh, my right hand side here, I have two other columns loaded into this watch list. One is the market pulse stage off of a 30 minute time frame, and another is the same thing, market pulse, but again off of a daily time frame. That's what's also loaded in onto my charts here, and this scan is running off of a daily time frame chart. Now, typically, once you have these results, we go through each one, we use back testers, we try and get to the final answer of which is the, the strongest stock to try and participate in, which has worked historically. What this allows you to do is just by clicking one column here, you can sort this, get an idea from all of these stocks, which are the ones where we have the strongest bullish trend. That's the acceleration trend. You'll notice if we scan up and down the acceleration list here, all the way from Western Union up to AR, Western Union has the highest uh, number in terms of how long have we had this trend, 46 bars consecutively. That's uh, the longest that we have so far. So Western Union would be the stock in which you see this trend is uh, the most bullish. If we tried to find newer trends, you'll see at the top of the list you have AR, EOG, GRA, where the market pulse just turned green one bar ago, and that's what we currently see on our chart. So you know there's a new trend forming there. If you'd like to get an idea of where you have a greater chance of a pullback, that's more or less the accumulation stage. That would be the gray bars right here. Uh, and you can, again, filter this. You can add in whatever numbers you'd like to track. Maybe you're looking in particular for how many uh, consecutive acceleration and accumulation bars, and that might be your counter. Whatever it is, in this tutorial, you'll get an idea of how you can build it and customize the market pulse so that it works for your needs in the dashboard. Now, in case you'd like to skip the coding portion of this tutorial and download the final version of this code, uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description box as well. If you are following along with the coding portion, you will need the Market Pulse Indicator. That's a free indicator, but you'll need the code of that. I'll make sure to link that as well in the description box. Uh, but go ahead and download that as that's our starting point to start with this dashboard in the first place. Now, for those of you that are importing uh, the final shared link in, the way to do that is by clicking Setup in the top right-hand corner. Click Open Shared Item. Here, paste in the shared link that's uh, in the downloads file for uh, this tutorial. You can find that on our website. So I can paste in the link, click Preview here, and then you'll notice there's a name right down here which says Import Item As. And then you can click Import. You can also click Open Shared Item after you import if you'd like that. But now once I click Import here, you'll notice it says Market Pulse Custom Quote has been imported successfully. And you can find that directly inside of Customize here. And you'll notice if I type in Market Pulse, there it is, Market Pulse Custom Quote Dashboard Column. And that's the file that I just imported in. So that's how you would go ahead and import that in if you are downloading from scratch. Now, back to the actual coding portion of this tutorial. Now let's get started by coming into our Studies icon. Here, we'll either load in the Market Pulse Indicator if you don't already have it on, or if you have it on, click the scroll icon so we have access to the code. You can also use a text editor such as Sublime to access the code. Now here, I'll copy paste all of this code and we'll close this out, come into our left hand side, look for the watch list. If you don't see a watch list already loaded on, you can click this add gadget icon and then choose watch list from this column. Now I'll close this out and we can then click this cog icon where you see the watch list, click customize and that then opens up the pane where we can now start to build out our watch list custom quote columns. Now, I will remove both of these for the time being, and let's get started with using one of the custom quotes that I have. Uh, you can type custom quote here to access all your custom quotes. You can also choose this drop down and select custom quotes. That's another way you can get to this customized list. Uh, or you can use the shared link that's available on the download. Uh, search up what the name is that the, the file has been imported as. Most likely it will be Market Pulse Dashboard, uh, and then you can uh, add it to your charts that way, whichever way you prefer. Now, let's click the scroll icon inside of this, navigate to the ThingScript Editor tab. I'll bring this down, and here I can paste in the code, the Market Pulse code that we just copied. Now, before we get started with modifying the code, let's do a quick review, as I think that'll be helpful to understand how the code is laid out. Now, at the top, as usual, we have our input variables. Here we have three different inputs. Price and length are really the constant inputs. There's no reason that this needs to be an input. In, uh, in fact, we could change it to a def variable when we get to editing the code. 
Uh, and outside of that, chart bubbles we won't need for our dashboard, so we can remove that when it comes time again to modifying the code. Now the next chunk that we have, really lines 12 to 22, is our variable moving average. This is code from Thinkorswim directly, the built-in indicator, and all we're doing here is plotting a 10 period variable moving average. We don't need the set default color, so we can remove that code as well. Now if we keep coming down, uh, we then have variable weighted moving averages. We have the 8 period, the 21 period, and the 34 period. And we then look at the relationship between each of those moving averages to create three different uh, variables. One is a bullish variable, which is our acceleration stage. One is a bearish variable, which is our deceleration stage. And then finally, we have our distribution period, which is if you're not bullish or you're not bearish, then you're in distribution. And we break this down further into whether or not you have your close being greater than your variable moving average, in which case your stage is accumulation. And if your close is below your variable moving average, that's to say price is below this line, then we would be looking at a stage of distribution. So hopefully that helps to give you an idea of what the code looks like. The add label function will continue to use. We don't necessarily need the assign value uh, color, and we don't need any of the chart bubble code as well. Now let's start at the top and let's start modifying. So first we can get rid of our chart bubbles code. That should give us errors at the bottom, which we can now fix. So here we can just remove all of this code. Same thing with the distribution to deceleration. Close that out. Let's also give this a name, so we'll call this market pulse. Now coming back inside of the code, let's go right back up to the top. We said we could change each of these input variables to a def. So let's change this to a def and this to a def. So now price and length are both constants. We don't necessarily ever change the 10 period length or our closing. So now that we make it a def, takes care of that guy. Now coming down here, we have our plot variable moving average. We would not like to see this plotting since the only uh, value we'd like plotting is the text of the label. So here we can change the variable moving average to also be a def variable. Now once we change that to def, we'll have a error here which says you cannot set default color, which is the next line of code, to a def variable. That can only happen with plot variables. So now again, we remove that since we don't necessarily care to plot this line. Now, keep coming down here. The next piece that we're seeing an error in is our assigned value color. We said we didn't need that as well, so we can remove that. And now we're left with code, which should, for the most part, uh, compile altogether. Now, one quick note to point out, in case you are using uh, older Market Pulse code, the indicator has been updated, and you can also download that same version to have the most up-to-date add label code, in which uh, we have our distribution and accumulation stages both meeting exactly what uh, the line is plotting. So now that we have this label, if we click Apply here, let's click OK, and let's see what we have so far on our charts. You'll notice that all this has done so far is given us text that's colored. Uh, we don't have the background changing color, and we have this label which says stage, colon, accumulation, and we don't have our count yet either. So those are the things we still need to fix up. Let's start with the easy one, which is just removing the word stage first. Uh, and so if we remove stage from deceleration, stage from accumulation, and then stage from distribution, that should then give us just the actual text. And we can also remove the final parameter here, which is what's changing the color of the text. The only color that we would like is white, uh, colored out white, since we're going to have the background changing color. That then also leads us to that natural segue of writing the assigned background color code here. So we can say something like assign background color. And here we can just start off by listing uh, the same uh, code that we have up here. So we can say something like if bullish and close is greater than variable moving average, then we would like the color here instead of acceleration to be color.green. Now moving on, if bearish and close is less than or equal to variable moving average, here our color would be red. And then finally, if our close is greater than our variable moving average, but we're not bullish, then our color here, we can make this, let's just say gray, uh, and then we can make distribution gray as well. Uh, then color dot gray, or actually else color dot gray. I need to close that out. That should compile. Perfect. So now let's test this code to see what this currently looks like. So if I click apply, we click OK. So, so far here, this is looking uh, closer to what we were hoping to get to. We still have that white font here, which is a little unreadable. So we can just say uh, color 
dot black instead click apply so that's a little bit better now let's say you wanted to break out the accumulation and the distribution into two separate colors as well the way to do that would be to come right back into our assigned background color code and here we could say uh, if bearish and close less than we have our color dot red now this is our accumulation so here we could say something like instead of green maybe you're looking at let's say cyan and then for our distribution uh, we would be looking at let's say orange as an example instead of red if we click apply so that gives us a little bit more color here uh, depending on what you prefer I think gray to me looks a little bit cleaner so I'll stick with using the gray at least for accumulation uh, and maybe leave the orange for distribution um, and then that will be what's in the code but in case you'd like to change the colors this is where you can go ahead and do that so here we'll just change this to gray click apply and we have that now updated okay so now the next piece that we need to add in is our counter variable now to add in our counter variable we can create a new uh, variable here called def bullish counter and here we can say something like if we're bullish then take the previous var uh, variable or value of the bullish counter variable and add one to that uh, else if we're not bullish so that's to say we hit anything else but bullish then reset the counter to zero else just give me what the previous candles or a previous bars value was in the event that we have a continuing trend and that's for bullish if we click apply here just to incrementally test first before we build out the other stages uh, oh, we need to actually add it onto our label here so let's use acceleration and we can say colon plus bullish counter click apply Okay, so now, so far on our charts, we see for the market pulse, we have ACC, which is currently showing us an acceleration of three off of our daily time frame. Let's see if that's true. One, two, three. That does line up. And that previous candle, that very first candle, is the candle in which that trend was still technically gray or accumulation. So that's how, uh, so far, we know that our counter variable is working with the market pulse, at least with the bullish counter. Now, if we come back in, Let's repeat this process, but now we'd like to do the same thing for our bearish variable. So here we can say instead of bullish counter, we'll say it's bearish counter. And now we need to copy the bearish variable and replace it everywhere we've called the bullish variable. So we'll say bearish, bearish counter, add in a space here. All right, perfect. And then we can add in a distribution counter as well. Depending on if we'd like to break out the uh, uh, accumulation and deceleration, we can do that as well. Or we can keep it as just the distribution counter. Let's say we did want to break it out. Then here we could come in and say accumulation counter. And then for that, we'll say if bullish and close is greater than or equal to your variable moving average, then uh, we're going to be using our accumulation counter plus one else if uh, anything but that value then zero otherwise we're going to be using again that same previous uh, candles accumulation counter variable and actually this variable right here should instead say if this is not true perfect so that's our accumulation and then we need to repeat this one more time which is going to be for our uh, distribution counter so we'll say distribution counter perfect and then here our distribution is if our bearish and close is less than or equal to variable moving average then we'd like to take our previous uh, distribution counter variables value and add one to that if we have the same condition being untrue then reset the counter to zero and otherwise take that same distribution counter and uh, give me the value on the previous bar so now that we have all of those uh, counter variables created we can go ahead and add that in uh, elsewhere here so we can say else if bearish um, and close is less than or equal to our variable moving average then deceleration add in a colon here and we'll say plus and we can add in our bearish counter and then we can say else if close is greater than or equal to our variable moving average then accumulation else distribution so actually we need to modify this here just a little bit we can uh, get rid of this code 
and just have it match completely. And we'll just say if close is greater than and close is greater than. Okay, cool. Now coming right back in here. So we have our counter variable added here. Now we need to add in our counter variable for accumulation. So we can say accumulation counter and then else if distribution, then add in my distribution counter. Okay, click apply and hopefully that should give us the final result that we're looking for. Perfect, so now let's try and sort the same list out uh, and we do have Western Union with that same 46. So now we know that everything is lining up as we expect. This is also lining up with what we see on our charts. The easy way to confirm that is by going to one of the variables that has just one. And you'll notice here we have just that one candle in which AR currently has started that new bullish trend. But you'll also notice the trend preceding that is very bullish. And those are ways that you can, again, come in and customize the code if you'd like to modify uh, the counter variable that you'd be looking at. For example here, in case you did want to have a counter of any time you had a green or gray bullish market pulse line, then you can come into say the bullish counter that you'd have here and you would say something like if either you were bullish or in a stage of distribution, then you would add one to the previous value. Else if neither of those were true, so that means you were in just a bearish condition, then the counter gets reset to zero else you have the same previous value. So that's one way that you can modify that if you were looking for it. Uh, this way I think is simple, it's just a clean way to keep the trend in mind. Whichever way you're looking to recognize a trend, this should be helpful in uh, evaluating what the trend looks like very quickly for a large group of stocks and then being able to sort through that list very quickly. Now in case you wanted to have multiple to create a dashboard type field, the way to do that is to just come in copy paste the entire code that we just created for our daily time frame. You can adjust this uh, right here in case you wanted to change this script to a different time frame. But if you wanted to have daily and say a 30 minute time frame as well, we can then come into customize, click the custom quotes list, choose any other custom quote that you have. I'll use one of the previous 30 minute ones that I had, delete all the code. We'll paste in the code that we just copied in from what we wrote. And up here, you can change this to whatever you'd like. So you can say something like 30. Um, and then we'll change this time frame here to make sure it actually matches. So 30 minute, click OK. And now we add that to our charts. We have two market pulse scripts. I can change that first one to say uh, be a market pulse daily. Click OK. And now if we click OK, you'll notice that now we have both a daily time frame along with a 30 minute time frame. You can again add as many or as few as you'd like. Keep in mind that each column takes up one of your custom quote scripts, but you can keep using the import uh, method if you'd like to add in more and more and more. All right, I hope you found this tutorial to be useful, especially for those of you that use the market pulse as your alternative to the moving average to gauge an idea as to what the trend looks like. This should be a useful tool to do that in a quicker, faster, uh, and probably a much more codified manner than what we currently had available to us. It should also make analyzing any trades from scans uh, or results that we have from other places uh, a lot easier in terms of understanding trend, especially if you wanted to have this broken down across a multitude of time frames. All right, take care, everyone. Good luck trading. I hope this ThinkScript tutorial was useful, and we'll see you in the next update. Take care, everyone. Bye.